morning and it was 6 a.m. and I looked at my clock and I was like, oh man, it's 6 a.m. Let's check the weather. I looked out the window. <laughs> it's beautiful outside. So uh, I'm going to go do something today. I think I'm going to try to get to that uh, national park that's up on the peninsula. And I might catch a ride with some European people that I met last night to be get a real easy ride and hopefully get me there pretty quick. <laughs> I just noticed the back of the European people's rental car. <laughs> it's got a sticker that's like, uh, it, it, it's indic indicative that they are not from here. <laughs> so they're like foreign drivers. <laughs> On the way to this national park, um, we're just driving along the coast and the roads are these really just kind of like wide-ish by Japanese standards roads. And this is really beautiful. You're going through these little forests, you're going along the coast. And um, the people that I'm with, they've decided that as they, they're doing a trip around the world, they've decided that as they're traveling, they want to try to swim in like every body of water possible. So they've stopped and we're kind of like a rock quarry or something that's on the, on the beach. And they've just decided to take a dip in the water. I. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna skip this one. It's a bit cold. I think I'll stick my toes in instead and that'll be good for me. <laughs> yeah, um, not getting the boy danglers up in there. That is too cool. Those people are brave. There's a little, like, uh, river that's running out of the mountains and down into the sea. And that is cold. <laughs> Hardcore cold. Coming to this national park, and um, it's about 10 o'clock now, so it took about it took a little while to get here, but we stopped and swam, and well, they swam, and I just uh, waited, and then we stopped and looked at this really amazing waterfall that was by the side of the road, and we drove into the um, complex with the national park, and it's really beautiful here, like shockingly beautiful, and they've built like a wooden walkway that goes above, kind of like a marshy area. The reason they did this is because they get so much tourism that the people walking through this all the time were starting to destroy the ecosystem. So they built this walkway and you get to walk out and there's some lakes that are famous around here. There's like five of them, I think. And um, lakes in Japan seem to come in fives. I don't know why, but anyway, so there's like five of these lakes around here that were, I think, formed from a volcanic eruption back in the day. And um, they have these electric fences basically around the perimeter of the walkway because there's a lot of bears around here apparently because there's signs everywhere that's like there's bears there's bears there's bears don't worry don't, don't 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 scream if you see the bears don't feed the bears don't do nothing with the bears you and bears need to be separated so they put this electric fence in in place to keep that uh to keep that rule to either keep us from getting down with the bears or from the bears getting up here i'm not really clear on which one <laughs> no promises here <laughs> There actually is a path that you can take. Um, you have to fill out an application and then pay 200 yen and then have a 10 minute lecture, seriously. And then once you've done all these things, they give you a certificate and you're allowed to walk a path that is not up on this elevated area. And um, they probably do that just to like enforce the, look, don't, you, you have a certificate now. Don't, 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 don't devalidate the certificate. You gotta behave yourself. So I think that's the mentality behind it all. It's all very interesting. And I was looking forward to doing this because I was really interested to see what this all was gonna contain and like what was gonna happen. But um, it turned into that it was closed right now because of the heavy rain that's been going on. It's kind of like a marshy area that we're in and I, I'm assuming it's probably been flooded. So um, probably it's also killing my chance of seeing any bears unless it's like some sort of scuba bear situation. But I haven't seen any signs say anything about that. In addition to the marshland, you get a pretty amazing view of these mountain ranges that are sitting right by this little pond. I think this little pond might be the lake. <laughs> I need a map. <laughs> and very close, if you turn around and look the other direction, you see the ocean. So this is all in a, like a lot of really cool different nature things all just like gelled together. It's really nice. Uh, check the sign. That's one of the lakes. It's uh, lake number one. <laughs> And uh, I guess there's four more of them hiding around here somewhere, but I think, again, that's like you have to go on the closed off path or whatever. It's, it's a little swampy looking, but um, it's pretty cool looking lake, especially with the reflection of the mountains in the sky off of it right now. And all like the, I don't know if they're lily pads, but you know, the green stuff floating on top, all that looks just really very picturesque. Like thinking about taking some photos and making postcards out of them or something, because like it'd be very easy to create that content right now.
kind of hiking off of a path and through a jungle looking for a waterfall that just popped up and um, had to like go through a, like a pretty strong little river and I walked past a naked guy. <laughs> There's some onsen back there and there was just a dude balls out shaven. <laughs> it's like, all right. So uh, that spooked me a little and I was like, I'm gonna trudge on. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, so check out this waterfall. That is, um, that's pretty badass. Bears, that yeah, should be all right. Little hidden forest adventures. This is what I miss Katie the most. Like, this is what we, we do this together. Where is Katie? This is a bit of a bummer. <laughs> So there are like um, a few different areas where there's little hot springs here and it seems like they're like natural in the sense that they're outside and they're free and everything but and I believe the water is like natural hot spring water I don't think this is being heated like artificially or anything but it does look a bit like somebody came out here and put a bunch of rocks here to like make it so that these would be where they are and like make them somewhat comfortable and they built little stairs and, and everything but it's like rustic and it's really cool like to just be out here right next to waterfalls sitting in these like hot tubs and stuff and um, the water is not ridiculously hot. It's like a really comfortable temperature for summertime. I don't know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to decide, I think it would still feel good in the winter. It'd be pretty magical here in the winter actually if there was some snow on the ground and like there was all the steam coming off and everything. That might be pretty awesome. <laughs> My, uh, my European friends are off on the rest of their adventure. We've uh, parted ways. They are headed to the other side of the peninsula. And I'm looking at the sky and thinking, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. It's starting to look like it's gonna rain, you know, again. I don't even care. I'm just so happy that I got out and like got to explore that little waterfall and like totally, totally cool day. So I think from here, I'm going to see if I can find a, like a tourist map or something. And then from there, look at it and see if I have anything else around here I want to try to do. And if I do have something, well, then we'll go that direction. And if we don't have something, I'm going to try to find some food. I'm in this little town. And if there's nothing else that I feel like I can get into today and still make it back to the hotel and not get drenched by rain, then uh, we'll do that. But um, yeah, I, this is a big I don't know. I'm at, I'm, at, I'm, at a, I'm at a crossroads here and I don't know where to go. <laughs> I like that crossroads. It's fun. Checking weather and stuff and looking at like maps and all that, trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. Um, and I think I, I, I put in a request for an Airbnb place. It's in Nemuro and that's not tomorrow, but the following day. So I'll have to get there by then. It's only about two and a half hours by car, so that shouldn't be any problem at all. And then I realized how hungry I was. So I went to this convenience store to get a snack and I got that snack. And then uh, I walked out of the convenience store and I saw this thing and it looks like you can climb up it. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I like these dudes fishing. <laughs> there's a lot of tourist boats and stuff that will take you up the coast and you can do like, I think there's like maybe dolphin and whale watching and stuff. Maybe, I don't know if it's on this side of the peninsula or the other side, but I've seen a lot of signs saying that just because of storms and stuff, all that stuff is canceled. So <laughs> my luck has not been the greatest. Um, we also had seen some signs uh, earlier that were like, oh, hey, there's this waterfall 11 kilometers away down this like road. And we we're like, oh, great, let's do it. The road was closed because of rain. <laughs> so um, the rain, even though it's a clear day, is still kind of like putting a wrench into the monkey. You know what I mean? Was that the right way to say that? <laughs> that sounded wrong. <laughs> anyway, I think I need to eat because my brain isn't working so well. This is definitely going to be of assistance. <laughs> This thing has got kind of a Cliffs of Insanity vibe to it. Except, it looks like there's just stairs. <laughs> Probably not going to be too much trouble to get up. <laughs> I'm loving the explanation of the name of this thing. <laughs> the name of Oron Koiwa Rock originates from the Ainu language, meaning rock that is sitting there. <laughs> that's like a straight up, like... That's a, that's a really descriptive way to explain a landmark. Uh, that's good, that's good, it's poetic. This is unbelievable. They've got these huge cranes and they're moving these giant, huge chunks of concrete, I guess, like creating sea barriers and things like that. It's just watching this, 
I can't believe that they can pick that thing up. It doesn't make sense. And one of the cranes is on a boat. And it's, like, think about that, like boat, sinking, weight, like all those things and it's not sinking. It's incredible. Technology has blown my mind a lot lately. Like it always has, but it's like especially I've had time to just sit and look at it on this trip. And I'm just like, God, how did somebody figure all that out? It's amazing. People are amazing. The view from up top of this uh, rock that's just sitting here is not bad, not bad at all. There's another like crag that's kind of in the water that you can see and I mean it's pretty clear. You can see quite a ways today considering all the rain we've had. And the other side, if you turn around and look away from the water, it's mountains that butt right up against the coast basically here. It's really cool just to see how quickly like everything just goes from mountains to boom, sea level. It's a pretty drastic change. I'm still like, I'm still mesmerized by the cranes. <laughs> and I don't mean the birds, I mean the, the people cranes. Not to, not, not to downplay some birds, I mean, if there were some cranes here, like, I'd, that, that'd be cool too, but right now the only cranes present are people cranes. Man, I found somebody to party with, that's for sure. <laughs> this is my guy. I had bought the snacks at the convenience store and then walked out and like looked at that crag and I was like, all right, all right, all right I'm gonna climb up on that rock that's sitting there and I'm gonna eat my snacks. But I got up there and it was hotter than tarnation up there, man. I know it wasn't that far up, but it felt like I was right next to the sun. So um, I found now some shade next to the seawall where I think I'm allowed to sit. It looks, nobody's about, nobody cares. I'm not really in the construction area. It's not dangerous where I'm at. Um, and I got my snacks out and I thought I'd share a couple of them with you. So um, I got this specifically because it says that it has um, Hokkaido uh, mountain wasabi. And somebody recently had told me that like green wasabi is from like southern-ish Japan, but the Hokkaido wasabi is not as strong as like in green color. And if I recall, he said it was spicier and more like horseradish. Like that's the word that he used to describe it to me. Um, so this is like a, you know, I don't know what these things are called. It's not an onigiri. An onigiri is like a rice ball. It's like an oni sticky. <laughs> I know there's a word for this. Oh, maybe it's, um, uh, yeah, it's just nigiri, I guess is what you would call it. Uh, maki, 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 maki. Okay, yeah, so it's a maki and it's just like a roll, like a sushi roll kind of, yeah? But this one has got um, beef in it and it says it's like a, a gyu yakiniku and it's got mayonnaise with wasabi in it and you know hey whatever so anyway um let's see if i can open this one so there's often instructions <laughs> because it's kind of necessary so um step one is to just like peel it open i guess i'm holding the camera with my knees <laughs> and that's a bit of a challenge to shoot a how to do this thing so all right, and then this piece usually breaks away if you pull on it, or maybe this peels out. Okay, a little different than what I'm used to. And the reason that it's packaged so weird is so that the seaweed doesn't touch the rice before you eat it, because then the seaweed will get all like, you know, rancid or foggy, soggy. Foggy, probably not. Soggy is a possibility. So then you get it opened, and I know this is, don't, 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 don't use this for any instructional purposes. <laughs> But anyway, you basically end up touching that and it gets really stuck to it. And then if you're a master, you can roll it out without touching any of it with your fingers aside from the seaweed, but it just didn't happen. Okay, so then you end up with a this, a seafood wrapped uh, rice log with, um, you know, beef and wasabi. I realize this probably isn't the most authentic way to try Hokkaido wasabi, but I saw it and was like, oh, let's give it a try. Mm. Okay, yeah, uh, I wouldn't say that the wasabi is very spicy on that bite. Um, it's pretty subdued by the mayonnaise and stuff in it, but it's good. I'm really hungry. Mm. That's a damn good snack for 100 yen. Like, that's like a dollar, you know? And then, um, I also got uh, another one of these, um, uh, Grana, ga, <laughs> Grana ale. And so this one is specifically like an ale, like a ginger ale, I guess. And um, it's that soda that I've been raving about that I had one that had booze in it a couple days ago. And I just was interested to get it from a different manufacturer. It's not Kitten, it's another company. And um, I wanted to just try it because I said ale on it. And I don't know, this is my jam now, you know? Mmm. It's possible this one's better than the Kirin one. Now I need to have both of them to taste test them. It's very similar in flavor, but um, I don't taste like a an, an ginger ale-iness to it at all. So uh, they might have got me. They might have got me some marketing there, but it's okay because it's still it's still really good. 
There's this rock over there that looks like a uh, looks like a man dangler. <laughs> <laughs> I can't quit staring at it. It's like right there and it's just looking it's looking back at me and I'm looking at it and it's just like we're in this intense staring competition. Something triggered in my memory about this Garana stuff and I think I've seen it outside of Japan. Is this a soda that's from like South America or Central America? Um <laughs> let's I So on the back it says that this is like made from seeds from the Amazon, like in South America. So am I, is this just like, I've never, I don't recall seeing it outside of Hokkaido in Japan, but I'm starting to think that maybe I've seen it in like Mexican import stores in America or something. So I, I'm sure by now everybody's already like yelling in the comments, you know, like if, if I'm right about that, like that's not from Japan, that's not from Japan. But when I was introduced to it in Japan, I would like to say that at the factory they were like, we started making Garana here and the way well, I think what they meant was they the factory started was the f the first thing that factory made was garana, not that they invented it and it was the first place garana was made. I think I, <laughs> I think I've been misunderstanding it the entire time. But anyway, so yeah, I mean, if this is if this is local to where you live, you're lucky. This stuff is awesome. Like seriously, some place has a factory punching these things out. <laughs> this is somebody's job. Somebody. This is somebody's existence. <laughs> And I'm jealous. It's like three o'clock and like I want to find some more things around here. I want to like, you know, see if there's some interesting food or like something in this little area. However, the pressure, the air pressure is starting to fall and the clouds are starting to look worse and worse. So like, I'm just like, uh, it's only three o'clock. I might go back in town. I'll be there like maybe four, four thirty. Like, mm, I'd really, I feel like I still want to spend a few more hours here. However, I don't have an umbrella. <laughs> I mean, I could buy one, but like at the moment, I'm not carrying an umbrella. So um, I forgot it back at the hotel because it was so sunshiny this morning. And like, I don't know, I just don't want to end up like, you know, standing on the side of the road all soggy trying to catch a ride. <sighs> this, this, so the weather makes things really tricky to like, <laughs> to like plan out, you know? Man, it should stop this. It should just be beautiful all the time. I just hit the internet and checked the weather and it says I've got like 45 minutes before the rain is going to be here and then it's not supposed to stop for hours and hours. So I'm going to book it back into Shadi and um, hopefully I get a ride before I get totally soaked. 45 minutes, I got this. I can do this. I'm going to tits and teeth, Mark. Just, just, just get that smile out. <laughs> I'd like to point out I've got a pretty good system here where it flips closed, it's not all floppy and stuff, and then boom, I can have it open, like a split second, and then boom, flip closed. <laughs> my hand is just like, learn this like motion, it's my new talent. <laughs> well, it was five minutes and it started to rain, and it's sounding like I can hear it in the trees, it's gonna be like a lot of rain. There's a tunnel ahead, I'm hoping I make it to the tunnel before I get completely soaked. Why am I doing this? Run! <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, I'm too old for this. <laughs> you know, I'm not too old for that, that was fun. The problem I have now is I'm in a tunnel and there's no place for a car to pull off to pick me up. So it's not raining here, however, I don't think I'll get a ride. So I guess I'll go to the end of the tunnel and hope that just on the outside of the tunnel there's a pull off so I can stand inside, try to grab a ride and still have the place for the car to pull off. Hmm, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So this is the end of the tunnel. It's not a total disaster. That pull off is a little bit far down there, but I think it's gonna work itself out. If I have to run that far, I'll live. I also think I might get like, you know, pity points. People are gonna be like, man, he's standing right at the edge of that rain. Let's give him a ride. That's, good. That's gonna be what happens, I think. <laughs> About the 10th car that went by picked me up. And so it wasn't too long of a wait, maybe five minutes or something like that. And um, I think I mentioned that I'd never had two girls pick me up before, and that was two girls. Like two girls, that one was from Kobe and one from Tokyo, and they live in Hokkaido right now because they like it up here. And they were just really nice and really chatty, and we had to drive through the rain, and now I'm back. And they, they're actually staying apparently like really close to where my guest house is, so they just drove me straight to the door. So <laughs> didn't have to walk those two kilometers from the town back into the, back into the guest house area. Um, which is good because I didn't get all wet and all that, but it's bad because I don't really have anything to eat. So I might be surviving off of the guest house's ramen noodles, like packet noodles for, for, for the evening. But eh, whatever, at least I'm not soaking. Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed that uh, hitchhiking video. It was um, one of my favorite parts of the entire trip actually going up to Shiretoko National Park. 
up on that peninsula and just seeing how beautiful it was and everything. And there's something especially magical about the fact that it had been raining and raining and raining and raining. And then you had this like literally the most perfect like morning I've ever seen. <laughs> that perfect crystal clear blue sky and those amazing looking clouds and everything. And just getting the opportunity to go up there and like going up there with some new friends and like having some people to speak to in English like straight up was really fun and um the whole thing was the whole thing was really cool standing in that tunnel I still remember standing in that tunnel and those girls picking me up and giving me a ride back into in, into shoddy and everything it was um just wonderful um really cool day I'd like to go back up there again sometime um I think you can go up and you can go on like cruises in the winter time to go see icebergs or something like or ice flows or something like that um, I think it'd be a completely different universe to be up there and see it like covered in snow and everything. Um, so yeah, really, really beautiful national park. And when I tell people now that like, I've been there, they're always like, whoa, really? Like, it's like the frontier or whatever in Japan. Like, people are like, oh wow, you really made it way out in the middle of nowhere. So I get a little bit of pride like for that one. <laughs> But anyway, um, if you enjoyed this video, like all of our other videos, if you've enjoyed them um, and you want to follow them, of course, hit the subscribe button and then the bell next to the subscribe button can help you get notifications when we upload videos, like on your tablet or your phone or email and stuff like that. There's this like little bell. I don't know if you, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And you want to click that bell, then you can click that bell. <laughs> and other things you can do, you can hit the like button to help us out. Um, that helps other people find our videos. And um, commenting helps. And if you want to follow us, we have Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. And we have a web page too that isn't really a social media thing as much as it is like a museum of all of our videos. You can go there and you can see pictures and stuff that we put up that um, are complimentary to the videos. And the website is like the best way to look at all of our um, all of our content chronologically. So there's the next button and the previous button and you can just like go all the way from we started shooting stuff in like 2009 and consistently since then have been shooting. So there's a lot of stuff that you can check out if you're interested in seeing more videos of ours. Um, oh, and we also have a, uh, we have a Patreon page and that's how all of these videos are funded. So, um, if you want to help us out, like, uh, a few bucks a month or whatever, or however you want to set it up, that really helps us out. It helps us make more videos and stuff. And the people there have been very generous to us and that's why we're able to keep making videos for everybody. So, um, thanks to everybody there. And if you're interested, that would be a cool thing for you to check out. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else specific about this video that I want to talk about. Um... I think I covered it all. Mostly it's just because it was beautiful up there, right? And I have a uh, couple of questions that I wanted to, to answer here. And the first one is actually from somebody from Patreon. I think I just did one of these from Tammy like a video or two ago. Um, but it's another question that Tammy had asked. And she said, do you think you would ever dabble in other video projects? Specifically like artsy videos, skits, experimental stuff. It's an interesting question. Um... I don't consider myself like a videographer at all, but I do really like the art of like video. I like the production aspect. I like the editing aspect. Um, and that would lead me to probably be um, open to doing things like that. I wouldn't probably do anything like that relate like on this channel exactly. Like, I mean, it wouldn't really fit in like that much or anything, but if somebody else had a project or something and I got involved with it, I think it would be fun to like learn from that experience and like see how they go about doing their production and everything and then being able to maybe apply some of those things that I learned into our videos and stuff. So I would think it'd be really cool to be a part of something like that. Um, at this point, I don't see myself spearheading anything like that. I definitely don't see myself ever doing anything where I have to be scripted in front of a camera and speaking because I can't think of something, it's it's hard to think of something I dislike more <laughs> than doing videos that are like scripted. I just, it just drives me bananas. Like if I have to stick and like get certain points out and like all of that stuff, it's just really, really, really difficult for me. So, um, I, I sometimes will make like a quick list and then just, okay, I just got to pop this stuff off the top of my head and then I can deal with that. But if there's like some like specific set of words that have to be used, I'm doomed. I can't do it. Um, I'm not a very, not a very good actor at all, I guess is really what it comes down to. So on the, on the being on the, in front of the camera side, like in that type of thing, I can't imagine ever being comfortable doing that. But, um, on the, on the production side, I think it would be something I would really like to do. Um, if the, if the right thing came along. Um, in the past I've made, I used to be in a, a silly punk band in America, like, um, maybe, gosh, it's been like eight years ago now. And, um, we filmed a couple of videos and I, you know, I'll link the videos in the description if you're interested in seeing them. 
Um, they were shot in 2006 or seven or something like that. So they're quite old and they, it was like, we didn't have HD cameras and stuff, but, um, we made them like kind of like serious like productions in the sense that they were edited properly and all that stuff. So keep that in mind when you see them. And that was really fun. So I, I think I would really like to maybe get involved in making music videos or something for somebody or maybe get back into making music myself and then creating videos for them would be really fun. I find that, I think, pretty rewarding, actually. Something about, like, when you like, take video and line it up with music and stuff, there's something really, like, therapeutic about that, like, when you're doing the editing process. So sometimes we'll have, like, little... We very rarely do this, but sometimes we'll have musical stuff that's built into our videos, and when I tie those things in and I build those pieces and stuff, I find it really rewarding. So I think it'd be fun to do a whole project like that, if that helps answers your question at all. Um... Let's see, uh, next question, um, from, uh, Panda Poof? <laughs> Panda Poof, oh, I'm sorry, this is Panda Poof 1. So, um, yeah, that's a great name, uh, from YouTube. It asked me, would you ever consider explaining why you lived in so many places? And I'm not, I'm not sure where this had been mentioned before, but I have lived in, um, a lot of different houses in my life, um, before I even, like, knew Katie or anything, like, before we started traveling around and all that. Um, so my, my family, I was born in Oregon and then when I was a baby, we moved to California and then once we were in California, we lived in a lot of different places. Like we lived in the Bay area for a while and then we lived in a little town called Sonora. Um, actually I think we lived in Columbia technically, but it's near Sonora and that's kind of up near the Yosemite part of California. And then, um, we lived down near in Lindsay, California, very briefly. And then we moved back to Oregon and we lived outside of Eugene in a place called um, Pleasant Hill. <laughs> I've lived in so many places, it's really difficult to like keep track. Um, for a summer, I lived in Washington State with, with, uh, with my aunt and my uncle, and then back to Oregon, and then we moved to Virginia, and then in Virginia, my family lived in one house and then another house, and then I moved out, and it's, I've lived in a, a tremendous number of houses. And a lot of people are like, oh, your dad must be military, until they hear the places that we lived, and they're like, that doesn't sound like military. It's just that my parents are kind of, I don't, eccentric isn't the right word, because they're definitely not eccentric, but they're very somewhat adventurous, I think, and um, they would move around a lot just for different various reasons. Um, often it would be work. My dad worked, um, uh, did like a lot of construction based stuff. So they'd be building like hotels and stuff in one area and then we moved to another area. And when we were in California, the, we had, they had the market crash and then our, our family moved around because of the market crash because he, uh, he was in the construction in the, in the 90s or whatever. And when that happened, it was really devastating. So ended up in different places all over the place. So there's not really a solid reason aside from that my family is just, my parents are just willing to move. And I think they find it a bit adventurous to move. And they have lived in, I can't even, I couldn't even, I don't even think I can start naming all the states they've lived in at this point. Like, <laughs> it's really complicated. Um, I've only really lived in like four, three states, I guess, but like they've been all over the place. But that's really the answer. Um, and then after that, of course, Katie and I have lived in a few different places in Japan, and basically that was a slow crawl closer and closer to Tokyo. <laughs> but um, Katie hasn't lived in so many places. Um, her family moved to one area. Her dad was a dentist, so he had established a practice and stuff, and that kind of keeps a family rooted in one place. So um, she lived mostly in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and um, that's where we met. And I did live there for quite a while, but I don't know. I hope that answers your question. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, that's a, that's that, that does it. I, 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 how many long? Nine minutes. We're, we're, we're good on the sound card. <laughs> Sometimes I would travel on too long. I apologize. So anyway, um, yeah, more stuff is coming. More hitchhiking videos. More Borneo videos. More... Uh, Katie in America videos are coming. Um, I gotta edit one of those today, actually. And then Hong Kong videos are gonna be coming later in the year. And some things that we're gonna film that Katie doesn't even know about is coming, and it's a secret. 